sports, in the heat of the moment, it can be hard not to be emotional. Unfortunately for some people, those emotions can be a bit over the top. I think their goal, I really start to believe their goals is to be the worst defensive squad in the league. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 rants in sports. It's my quarterback. And if you guys do that, man, it's unfair. For this list, we're looking at rants, outbursts, and tirades from athletes and coaches, both professionally and at the college level. I mean, this is a damn cheap piece of crystal here. This isn't, this isn't expensive enough to answer all those questions. Number 10. I'm a man. I'm 40. Mike Gundy. If you want to go after an athlete, one of my athletes, you go after one that doesn't do the right things. Oklahoma State Cowboys football coach Mike Gundy was less than happy after hearing about an article that critiqued one of his players, accusing QB Bobby Reed of being soft, a mama's boy, and of losing the confidence of his coaches. And then say that the coaches said he was scared? That ain't true! Gundy loudly defended his player, saying he'd done nothing wrong, that the article was primarily fiction, and that the editor was garbage. That's why I don't read the newspaper. Because it's garbage. And the editor that let it come out is garbage. Gundy continued to rant and rave, saying that it wasn't fair to target a non-professional and that perhaps the media should target a real adult like himself, prompting the line, Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Number 9. His entire career, John McEnroe. <laughs> Despite being one of the best tennis players of all time, Johnny Mac may be better known for his temper and tirades than his play. I mean, John realizes he had missed that backhand. Unlike the other entries on this list, McEnroe didn't have one particular moment where he seemed to lose his cool. Instead, he had a string of famous outbursts over the course of decades. <laughs> McEnroe may have been one of the all-time bests at yelling at officials with classic lines like Answer my question! The question, jerk! And, of course oh, You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Number 8. Real fans don't boo, Phil Esposito. Some of our guys are really, really down in the dumps. We know, we're trying. What the hell? I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can. At the height of the Cold War, and in an era when NHL players were still banned from competing at the Olympics, the question on everyone's mind was, who's really better, the Canadians or the Soviets? The sense of tension in the country was enormous. The Summit Series sought to answer that, with a head-to-head -head competition comprised of four games in each country. When the heavily favored Team Canada was booed following a Game 4 at-home loss, team leader Phil Esposito had some choice words for the fans. I'm really, really, I'm really disappointed. I am completely disappointed. I cannot believe it. Esposito spoke with a sense of brevity, implying that the series was about much more than hockey. And many credit his speech with helping the Canadians turn the series around. We came because we love Canada. And even though we play in the United States and we earn money in the United States, Canada is still our home, and that's the only reason we come. And I don't think it's fair that we should be booed. Number seven, put that in your pipe and smoke it, Hal McRae. I'm sick and tired of all this bullshit. At first, there seemed to be nothing out of the ordinary in a post-game interview with Royals manager Hal McRae following a loss. However, apparently, after his team had had a rough season the previous year and was off to a slow start in the current season, asking if he considered using a pinch hitter crossed the line. No, no, don't ask me all these stupid ass questions. McCray immediately went into a frenzy, spewing profanities, You think I'm a goddamn fool? and throwing anything he could get his hands on across the room, even injuring one reporter with a gash to the face. Ask me that stupid ass every after he'd expelled all the reporters from the room, he ended his rant with a classic line. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Number six, you play to win the game, Herm Edwards. You play to win the game. Things did not look good for coach Herm Edwards' 2-5 New York Jets in 2002, but Herm never was one to give up. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. A few days after one loss, when asked about the team's motivation to win, he delivered one of the most intense and motivational answers of all time. You don't play to just play it. 
That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. Quickly became Herm's catchphrase, and he went on to write a book bearing that title. Perhaps more importantly for Herm and the O2 Jets, the speech sparked a turnaround that saw them win eight of their next ten games, including a 41-0 playoff game. You don't play to just play it. You don't play to win. When you start telling me, it doesn't matter. Then we tie. Get out. Number five, playoffs. Jim Mora. We gave him the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. If Herm Edwards was a motivational leader, Colts coach Jim Mora was anything but. It was 2001, and his team was 4-6, and six, having just lost their latest to the 49ers. Mora began by discussing his disappointment with the Colts' play, and that they'd turned the ball over five times. You can't turn the ball over five times like that. Holy I don't know who the hell we think we are. Actually, he didn't have a lot of positive things to say about the team's performance, calling it pitiful, and saying that it sucked. That's pitiful. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful to, to perform like that. Pitiful. When asked about the team's odds of making it to the playoffs, it's safe to say that Mora was less than optimistic. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. In fact, he seemed doubtful that his team could even pull off another victory during the regular season. P.S. They finished 6 and 10. Number 4. The Crabtree Rant, Richard Sherman Don't you ever talk about me! When two divisional rivals met in the 2013 NFC Championship game, things were bound to get heated, especially when one of the league's best receivers, Michael Crabtree, went up against one of the best corners, Richard Sherman. He's a TV guy. I'm not a TV guy. I play ball. You make one play and you talk. That's, I mean, a good play. After Sherman's Seattle Seahawks defeated the defending NFC champion 49ers with a game-saving move by Sherman himself, dubbed the Immaculate Deflection, he had some choice things to say to Crabtree or any other doubters, shouting next to a clearly disturbed Aaron Andrews. Well, I'm the best corner in the game. When you try me with a sorry receiver like Crabtree, that's the result you're going to get. Love him or hate him, Sherman's attitude seemed to work for him and his team, as the Seahawks went on to win Super Bowl 48 that season. Crabtree, don't you open your mouth about the best. Or you, I'm going to shut it for you real quick. L.O.B. Number three, I want to eat his children, Mike Tyson. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. Iron Mike was one of the most unpredictable boxers ever to step into the ring. There he bites him there, you see him lift his teeth. And he always had a particular way with words. However, his erratic behavior when giving speeches reached an all-time high when he was hyping his much-anticipated match with Lennox Lewis. In one moment, Tyson compared himself to historical figures and the greatest boxers of all time. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. The next, he described his skill with a flurry of adjectives. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. Before making one of the most bizarre statements in the history of sports speeches. I want to eat his children. He finished with a prayer. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike, that Mike... Number two, that's how I feel, Kevin Borseth. After the game, was I mad? Yes. Did I exp express to them I was mad? I was furious. Just furious. A lot of coaches like to build up their rage during a rant, but Michigan Wolverines women's basketball coach Kevin Borseth came in with a furious entrance unlike anyone else. Borseth was understandably upset after his team had just blown a 20-point lead that fateful day in 2008. And according to Borseth, there was one thing to blame, offensive rebounds. The entire thing came down to offensive rebound. They got every stupid offensive rebound and we didn't get one of them. Citing either his team's lack of blocking skills or unfair refs as aggravating factors. We didn't get one damn call the entire game. Borseth went on for several minutes before he seemed to run out of steam and finally apologized. Sorry, I apologize, but I'm very frustrated. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. My wife can score more than two buckets on 11 shots because I know my wife will at least shot fake one time. But those guys aren't listening. They're uncoachable right now. They soft like I never see a bunch of defensemen soft like this. If I see him in a snowstorm, his, tr his truck is broke down, mine is going perfectly. Would I pick him up? No. 
So you, you little cunt, when I tell you to do something, and you, you f***ing big cunt, when I tell you to do something, do it. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. And I told our players, you need to be more like a dog. We don't need a bunch of cats in here. Yeah, looking in the mirror. Do I look good? I got my extra bands on. I got my other shoes on. Be a dog. We don't need no meows. We don't need no cats. Number one, practice. Allen Iverson. Not the game. We're talking about practice, man. Allen Iverson has always been a, let's call it, charismatic player. Now the crowd loves that. Take a look at the crossover. Mike says, oh! Notorious for saying and doing what he wanted on and off the court. That's Allen, huh? Iverson was questioned one day after a loss in 2002 about his tendency to miss practices, and his response was one for the ages. I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. He seemed skeptical about the importance of missing a few practices, and failed to see how his attendance would really impact his fellow players. I know it's important. I do. I honestly do. But we're talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? But most importantly, AI wanted to make it explicitly clear that they were, in fact, talking about practice and not the game. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Not a game. Not, a, not, not the game that I go out there and, and die for. So much so that he repeated the word practice in his rant over 20 times. Not the game, practice. We're talking about practice, man. <laughs> We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We ain't talking about the game. We're talking about practice, man. Do you agree with our list? It's really unfair. Which rants got you all fired up? I'm not going to answer any questions from you. You're not? No. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll speculate. You speculate and be as, be as sarcastic as you I can will. be, as you usually oh, I are. I will. Go right ahead. For more emotional top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.